Hey everybody, I'm Emily here from Busu, the award-winning language app. Today we're going to be talking about 10 English words that even English speakers find difficult. And to do that, we made up a little game. So I've invited my friend Becky from London and YouTuber Natalia from Learn German Fast to come see if they know these 10 tough English words and talk about them. Let's take a look. Hello Becky and Natalia, welcome. Hi guys. <laughs> Natalia, your first language is German, right? Actually, my first language is Ukrainian. Oh, cool! But, uh, <laughs> I live uh, in Germany a um, few years already, and I studied here, and I teach German. Okay, awesome! That's very cool. How long have you been speaking German? Um, now for eleven years. Wow. Okay, great. Um, and Becky, is your first language English? Yes, it is. And this is going to make me look bad. I don't know any other languages. But <laughs> hopefully my English should help do me well in this challenge. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was, I guess that's the other question. Natalia, do you speak any other languages? You speak Ukrainian, and German, and obviously English. <laughs> yes, I also speak Spanish a bit, and Russian, and um, Polish. Wow, that's, you're very <laughs> multilingual. <laughs> and it's so great to have both of you here. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having us. I wanted to check on your language skills a little bit because that might give you a little leg up in this game, maybe. Although, Becky, you know, obviously being an English speaker and these being English words, that's its own leg up. It too. sounds like I'm an advantage. So here's what's going to happen today. First, I'm going to read you a word. Uh, I'll show you how it's spelled and uh, you can say if you know what it means and if so, what it means and if not, give your best guess uh, and maybe we can talk about why you think that. Um, and then I'll tell you what it means, where it comes from, how to use it in a sentence, and, and it'll just be sort of like a little fun, but not super high pressure, speaker versus speaker face off with uh, 10 difficult English words. <laughs> All right, so our first word is capricious. Capricious, and here, I wrote them down because uh, I don't know if this is helpful, if you can see it. Capricious. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's an adjective. An adjective, you know, when you describe mm -hmm. someone or something, something is capricious. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be very blunt. I've never heard of that word or seen that <laughs> spell anywhere. But I would agree it does sound like an adjective just because the way it ends. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me, it just sounds like precious. So I'm thinking it's something along those lines, like something capricious, like something of preciousness. Interesting. Okay, very cool. I like that guess. <laughs> Uh, capricious means changing often and quickly, like you can have, it's, it is an adjective, you're absolutely correct. Uh, it can be like a whim, like a mood, like you're, like you're capricious in terms of like, uh, like my manager is capricious at work, like <laughs> one day she's happy, the other she's sad, um, you know, <laughs> or like okay. capricious weather is one that they might say, especially maybe in England. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the background of that is that it actually comes from, it comes to English via French from Italian. So it's like a fun little, like, it jumped around. Uh, and, and it's uh, from the, the word capriccio, um, which actually means a shudder of fear because it's uh, capo, which means head, and riccio, which means hedgehog. Uh, so it's like the head of a hedgehog because your hair stands on oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I think that's adorable. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I think that was a really cute like, <laughs> word. <laughs> word number two. Phlegmatic. Phlegmatic. Oh, I know okay. this one. <laughs> you know yeah. this one? Oh, no, so we're nil-nil, but, um, right. Don't know. Phlegmatic so, is like a person who is so slow and doesn't want to do anything, just chilled. Oh, it's okay. This yeah, you're phlegmatic. absolutely right. <laughs> That's Becky. <laughs> what would you have guessed if you'd seen this? <laughs> well, it's hard to guess now. I guess. Well, yeah. How, how do you say it? How do you say it again? So it's. You'd think it would be phlegmatic, but it's actually yeah. phlegmat phlegmatic. But it is. You'll notice the word phlegm is in there. So a lot of people think it means like phlegmy, uh, oh. but it, it actually is. You're exactly correct because it comes from um, like the four humors, which people believed about like believe like in medicine before germ theory was like you know, the body was controlled by humors and phlegm is one of them. And it's like cold and slow and like solid. And so people who were phlegmatic were people that were like very, and continues to be used today to mean someone who's very sort of like chill, apathetic, kind of slow, kind of cold, you know, even. Amazing. Yeah, so okay, absolutely correct. Cool. So one for a German speaker there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and don't worry, again, low pressure, low pressure. No, don't worry. I'm very, what's that, phlegmatic about this. <laughs> <laughs> word number three, zeitgeist. Oh, that's a cool word. Yeah, the um, zeitgeist. 
doesn't even look familiar. Like it doesn't really look like any other <laughs> English word I use. It's I like this word. This is a word that I definitely learned in college. <laughs> Can I look at uh, the word again? I always find that helps, but it hasn't helped me so far. So, zeitgeist. How do you say that again? Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. How... Zeitgeist. I mean, yeah. it doesn't even sound English. Zeitgeist is German. It means oh. spirit of the age. <laughs> <laughs> what spirit of the age yeah yes. so it's it's actually been used in english since 1835 but it okay. is a german word meaning because uh you can probably tell better than me but zeit means time and geist time. means like ghost or spirit right oh. yes it's like bob dylan's music captured the zeitgeist of the 1960s it means like like the defining spirit or climate unique to like a given time period you know, office space captured the zeitgeist of corporate America in the 1990s. Cool. <laughs> nonplussed. Um, right, nonplussed. Okay, let's think about this logically. So it's obviously... <sighs> My logic is gone. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's something like you, you've come alone. Alone? Something like that? The reason is because I'm thinking it's like the opposite. You've got the non and plus is like plus one, extra. So that's my thinking behind it. All right. Any any guesses, Natalia? Here, I'll hold it up again. Mm. Non plus. Non plus. <laughs> yeah, I think I go with Becky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> non and plus are the two root words from Latin, but uh, it actually means couldn't possibly be any more. Uh, so it's like oh. bewildered or perplexed is like a, a synonym. Even the hardened detective was nonplussed by the criminal's shocking confession. <laughs> nonplussed. So just not phased, I suppose, not bewildered. No, it's or the opposite. Saying, it's oh, very phased. I see. But oh. here's an interesting thing. Nonplussed is used colloquially in America to mean unfazed. So oh, it's, just people use it wrong now. all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's actually like, if you speak French, maybe non plus would be like no more, or like oh. non plus in Latin, no more. Mm. That's where that comes from. <laughs> Moving onward, we have Isthmus. It does look very familiar. Do you want a hint? Go on, yeah, it's I love like it. It's like a communismus. <laughs> it's, a, so it's a geography term. Oh, 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 okay. Is it like a tremor? You know, an isthmus, like a, oh, that felt like a, a tremor. <laughs> Is it an <laughs> island or something? <laughs> Almost. Uh, it's the piece of land that, that attaches like an almost island to the rest of land. I actually drew it because where I grew up in Nova Scotia is attached to Canada by an isthmus. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love the diagram. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I don't Very know why good. it went so geographically accurate, but... <laughs> <laughs> in German, we would say uh, Halbinsel, like half, um, half island. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah, it's like a part of the land, but on the sea or ocean. So we would say like it's not an island by itself. It's just a half island. Because That's great. What was the word again? Because to the land. Halbinsel. I love that. Oh, I actually meant to say isthmus is cool because it came from Greek, uh, isthmos, which means the same thing. Oh. I have a good feeling that you guys are going to get this one. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I, I feel like I, I really... need some points. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is number six, carabiner. Oh. Okay, I do know this one. All right. I think. <laughs> but okay. I'll give Natalia a go. No, 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 no. go for it. <laughs> So is that that little clippy thing, I mean, that you sort of, if you're climbing, you might have a carabiner and it clips onto your belt to keep you on? Yes. That's exactly correct. Natalia, mm -hmm. did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know this word. No? Do you, do you know from my description, though, what it is still, or have I really badly described that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Here, I you drew climb, this one too because little... it's another, I, I thought, just in case. This is That's a really good like. drawing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. It's for your safety, yeah? When you're climbing, you have this mm -hmm. thing to... Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I thought, Natalia, you might get that one because it's from German. <laughs> it's, uh, the word came to English uh, from German in 1920. Uh, so, does that mean that is the word in German as well? It's the same word? Yeah, it's yeah. a carabiner 
short for Karabiner Hocken. Uh, this is, I don't speak German, I'm so sorry for <laughs> <laughs> any pronunciation I do there. Karabiner, ah, oh, yeah, 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 Hocken. Karabiner Hocken, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we took, instead of the Hocken part, we took Karabiner, and we're like, that's what we'll call this. <laughs> that's <laughs> enough for <laughs> the English. <laughs> yeah, so point to Becky. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so I'm making a climb, I'm making a comeback. Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, we have interlocutor. Ooh, that interlocutor. sounds like a some sort of detective gasm, like gadget that detective the inspector <laughs> might have. Holly, do you want to take a stab at this? Maybe it's time like to locate, like locutor, to locate something, to find something. Ooh. What it actually means is actually very simple, if that helps at all. It's not like an obscure item or anything. Okay, I'm overthinking but, it. <laughs> can you give us a hint for the subject? In which context would you use sure. it? Sure. Uh, yes, so it's like person to person is a hint. And then I would break it up like this. So inter is one thing, and then locutor is a, like from a verb. So to locate something within someone, that sounds very deep. <laughs> <laughs> so what it actually means is a person who takes part in a conversation. Inter being between, and locutor being like talker, speaker, like eloquent or ventriloquist is the same root word. It's like a mediator, yeah? Yeah, and yeah, it's like a person. When you have a discussion, you have a mediator. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can even say it, it's a very fancy way to say it, and probably no one would, but you could say, like, the chatbot talks to its interlocutor. <laughs> it's, like, the person that it's talking with. I thought this would be a bit easier for me. Clearly not. But actually, it's normal, native or not native, it's normal that we don't know all the words. And even if in the class or someone on Instagram, if people ask me something, I say, I don't know. Yeah. I have to Google it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, we yeah. have to be honest, we cannot know everything in this world, so... And I think okay. also yeah, exactly. context also helps. And because we're just looking at them yeah. with no context, it is really quite difficult. Whereas I'm sure I have conversations with people and there are words that come up that I don't even know, but in context, I can kind of guess. Yeah. Definitely. How about for the last three, I give you the sentence too, and you can tell me what you think it means Ooh, okay. by that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that let's be cool. All right. So word number eight, we have nosh. Oh. Nosh. As in, <laughs> we'll stop to have a quick nosh on our way to the show. Okay. Nosh. Oh, I know. I know. Naschen in German is to snack something. So we will have a quick stop to snack something and then we go shop, shopping or something. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, definitely. I just thought it was slang. I didn't think it was a real word to eat, really. Go grab some food, quick food. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, uh, it came to English uh, via Yiddish, but is originally a German oh. word. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, we have... Mendacious. Ooh. Mendacious. Hmm, As in, I hard. like her, but her boyfriend is mendacious. Oh, He's okay. always trying to make it sound like he hangs out with celebrities. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that extra bit. Okay, so I think it's something about some sort of exaggeration. Um, mendacious. Yeah, I just think like someone's at, just making the story sound a bit bigger than it was. Pretty close. Uh, I would say also if you spoke, say, French or a romance language, you might know mentir or, or like mon et mon. Oh, like to eat. No? No. No. Like he lies. Um. So it, lying. Yeah. But so you were on the right track. It's a uh, mendacious means like, yeah, dishonest, lying, untruthful. So what, what was the <laughs> example that you used? A boyfriend. I like her. I like her, but her boyfriend is mendacious. Yeah. <laughs> I said, he's always trying to make it sound like he hangs out with celebrities. But that was just a dumb... <laughs> oh, okay. Now it makes sense. Yeah, he's lying. All right. So, number 10. Evanescent. Oh. Evanescent. Sounds like as in, innocent. <laughs> the professor's smile was quick. Evanescent as a rainbow. Or, I had heard the band Evanescence, but never bothered to Google what Evanescent <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Um, okay, I think that's, sorry, can you use the professor example again? Yeah. yeah, the professor's smile was quick, evanescent as a rainbow. Oh, maybe something unexpected? Or like, um, sort of resembles, I guess, resembles, something that makes you feel like it 
reminds you it obviously doesn't look like but it has like some traits some essence that's what i'm getting an essence from it essence is definitely a good a good track so it actually means tending to vanish like vapor oh so like vapor essence is like but tending to vanish and it's actually vanish uh, is the same root as the word vanish brilliant <laughs> cool yeah that's you don't need to know any more than that. I wrote a bunch of stuff about the Latin <laughs> root, but you get the idea. Yeah, I have a um, bonus for you too. A German oh. word. <laughs> oh. Fach- <Okay>. Fachkräfte Einwanderungsgesetz. <laughs> it's all one word. <laughs> God, that is a mouthful, isn't it? Say, could you say that a bit slowly? Yes. Fachkräfte Einwanderungsgesetz. <laughs> Fachkräfte. <laughs> this is a taste of my own medicine for sure. Uh, okay. Wandering gazettes. It's a wandering hard. craftsman's <laughs> journal. <laughs> it's super hard. Gazettes, it's a law. It's about the immigration law. <laughs> yeah, but all the all the politics and law words in German are so long, and in the end, it's always Gesetz law. Oh. And because we don't have like in German, all the nouns are written together. You don't have two nouns together in this like um, next to each other. If they are next to each other, then it's one word. That's why the German oh. words are so long. Sometimes there are three or four nouns in one word. <laughs> Ah, wow. that's interesting. I've always known that the words are really long, but I never really thought to ask why, so that's quite interesting. Wait, I, before we move on, I do want to know, what are all the nouns that are in this word? <laughs> what am I looking at here? So it's what an are the nouns? Law, but... So yeah. the Fachkräfte are skilled workers, like the ed- uh, educated people, Fachkräfte. Okay. And then you have Einwanderung. Einwanderung is uh, immigration. And Gesetz is law. Wow. Okay. Mm. All right. The more yeah. we know. <laughs> so those were all of our tricky English words. You both won because the point was just to have fun. Yay. <laughs> we worked as a team. We did. We did. I think we really helped each other out now and then. Yeah. I feel like you more banded together then. It was less of a face off and more of a friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you learned anything today? Any, what, what did you find interesting about this, if anything? <laughs> Um, I'm just surprised about how many words that aren't actually English, but sort of are used a lot in the English dictionary. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the challenge and I am super surprised how many German words you have in English. (laughs) So it was a bit (laughs) easy for me. (laughs) Me too. Does that mean I can add on to my list of languages I know? I speak a bit of German. Because Just I a little bit sure. of German. <laughs> yeah. Although I didn't get any of the German ones right, apart from Caribbean. Uh, speaking of which, Natalia, you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, Learn German Fast. You can find me everywhere, Instagram, TikTok, and sure, YouTube, and learn a bit of German. You know, whatever language you come from, whatever language you want to learn, uh, you're likely to find little connections where you least expect it. So it's like a cool thing that they, the languages exchange, and, and that's, you know... The exchange of culture, the exchange of languages, like connecting with other people is so much of why we learn a language and what's so great about the world, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I feel like that's yeah, it, that's the lesson I took away. <laughs> I think so. It, just, it makes you realize, like, actually, we're all so alike. You know, we borrow words from each other. There are a lot of similarities. Yeah, we're not yeah, as far totally. away as we all think, even if we are geographically. That's it for today, my friends. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Emily, this is Busu. Don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, subscribe if you wanna see more awesome language learning content like this, and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye.